Thank you so much for opening up your Calm the Chaos Insider. I'm really glad you're here. We're getting into the thick of school, and so I know that your chaos is kind of rising a little bit. And so this week, I want to give you three ways to keep that chaos at bay. First is an easy weeknight recipe, so at least one night here this week, you will not have to think about what to make for dinner. Second, homework is probably getting busy on your little kid's to-do list, and so I've given you my top ways to battle homework chaos before it even starts. And third, because I get you, stress is probably creeping in on you, and you may not be sleeping as well as you hope you can, and so I've given you my top tips in order to get a really good night's sleep. But let me ask you something. Are you taking care of yourself? Are you even a priority on your daily to-do list or are you somewhere near the bottom, if on it at all? I get it. Your kids' activities are probably exploding somewhere and it's stealing away all the time for you to take care of yourself. Or maybe you're trying to juggle your job and taking care of your family and maybe even taking care of an aging parent, right? There's a lot going on in our world, isn't there? And so often the chaos can kind of creep up and our selves can kind of get shoved off the list. That's not okay, ladies. We need some breathing room. Let me tell you a little story. So you're probably familiar with the whole process, but when I was younger and I had a four and a half year old and a six month old, we were getting on our plane ride together to leave from California to South Carolina. This was at the time when it was a newly post 9-11 culture that we were living in. And so the flight attendant had a whole list of things we needed to do, including that, you know, oxygen mask. And I remember sitting there while she said, okay, when the oxygen masks come down, make sure you put it on your nose first before you put it on anybody else's. And I felt horrified. Oh my gosh, I have to take care of my babies first, right? Well, almost in answer to that thought and that horrific reaction, her next words out of her mouth completely changed everything for me. She said, um, if you're not breathing, how can you help somebody else breathe? Wow. I wish the truth of those words had sunk in immediately that day, but it took years because I was operating under the faulty belief that if I could get everybody else settled, then I would be able to breathe. Y'all, that is so not true. We have to take care of ourselves. We really do may need to make sure that we get the oxygen we need every single day in order to continue taking care well of those that we have in our life and doing the things well that we want to do. We get this messed up, don't we? But this is just not my words about this. The Bible does say something about this and I wanna share it with you because I think it will help you battle that guilt feeling of what, what, you know, when it comes up that if you take care of yourself first, man, the rest of it might fall apart. You know, that fear, that lie that steals away your peace. Well, here's what the Bible says. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Do not worry about tomorrow. And that's from Matthew 6, 33 through 34. So how does this help us put on our oxygen mask? I'm glad you asked. So first it says to seek first God's kingdom first. Before we plan ourselves into oblivion, we must choose to invite God into that plan to seek his kingdom over the kingdom we're trying to make based on our fear and worry. Y'all, we put that oxygen mask on when we invite him into the process of helping plan out our days. But what does this look like on a daily basis, you know, on a practical level? Well, it looks like sp stopping and saying, okay, God, here's kind of what my plans look like. What is it that you have for me instead? And choosing to follow his plan instead of your own. The second thing this verse tells us is that we are to seek first his righteousness. Y'all, we work so hard to create our own righteousness, but nothing we can do can create righteousness for us. We already are righteous. Because the minute we took Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were given the breastplate of righteousness by God himself. This breastplate is meant to protect our hearts so that fear and worry cannot get in and steal us away from him in some wayward path that we're trying to follow. This is like taking that oxygen mask and tightening up those straps so that the air doesn't get out of that mask. And so in our case, so that fear and worry cannot come in. But what does this look like on a practical basis? This looks like choosing to intentionally rest in his plan for us instead of striving, striving to create our own plans and our own way of doing things. The third thing this verse tells us is that we are to not worry about tomorrow. Y'all, how many of your decisions on your scheduling um, of your daily you know, experience are based on fears and worries about what will happen if you don't? Now, I am not saying that you're not valuable to what it is that needs to happen in a day, but if fear is driving what you're doing, you really aren't going to take the time for yourself, are you? And what God is saying is that, listen, I want you to trust me. I want you to trust me. 
to allow me to let you get taken care of. And so this is like when we tug on that oxygen mask, it says to pull on it in order to activate the oxygen. So this is what happens. We get that oxygen flow and we're tugging on God's hand, right? Well, what does this look like in our daily lives? It's about prayer, y'all. And I know some of you are sitting there going, yeah, prayer doesn't really work. It's about trusting him and it's about waiting on his timing. So you're right. It's not going to work the way you want it to, but that's not the point. The point is to seek first God's kingdom, to receive his righteousness he's already given us, and then to ask him to step in and lead us. That's how we put on the oxygen mask, tighten the strings, and pull on to get the life-giving breath that we need. That's how it works. So y'all ladies, this week, as you're moving about your week, I pray that you will stop trying to figure it out all on your own and invite God in to put the mask on, to tighten the straps, and to tug on his arm in prayer and ask him for what it is you need. Thank you so much, and I have, hope you have a great week.